Hello, everyone. This is Robin from Center Street Decor, SVGs, and more, where I design SVG files for Glowforges and other laser printers. I design them for all the seasons, and today we are celebrating all the wonderful mothers in our life. So I have this file that we are going to um, paint. I'm going to show you. Um, the pieces that come in this file. And I have a bonus for you for this file too. And I'll show you um, when we get to that. Um, so let me just show you, I'm just gonna bring this up. So we are doing a mom's day house and the words here say heart of the home. So mom, heart of the home. And I actually have two different designs in this file. So there's this one um, with the mom up here and these are 3D up here and the roof is also kind of a 3D that you'll add on with the cutout heart. And then there is this design as well. So this one has the mom at the bottom and then it has a small heart that you can lay on here. And then I just added a little bit of greenery just to give it um, a fun look. So these are what I call my chunky shelf sitters. And I call them that because I like to cut them out in a few different thicknesses of wood. So I have three different layers here of quarter inch, quarter inch, yes, quarter inch plywood. It's, it's not actually a true quarter inch like any plywood that you buy. It's never a true quarter inch, but um, it's, three layers put together and these will actually stand on their own on a shelf so very lovely on a mantle fireplace mantle um any shelf that you have um around your home even a um in the entryway this is a really lovely mother's day gift and for those of you who are um making these files they're very quick to to paint easy to put together so you can add them to your shops. So these also, um, even though I have put them together with the three layers, you can also um, design them and just use one layer for a tiered tray look. So instead of making them a shelf sitter, it can just be one layer to um, lean on a tiered tray. So that's cute too. So, but, um, I designed the files so there are three different layers. And so when you get that um, file, you can use all three or you can just use one of them. Okay, I'm gonna bring it down so I, can, so I can show you the pieces that I have for these houses. Okay, bring it down, hopefully not make you too dizzy. Try not to make you dizzy. Okay. There we go. Okay, so what we have here is, so this is what would come in the kit. So for um, this one right here, what I used is I used three layers, all these three layers. And like I said, you can use one layer um, or not. So this part is engraved right here. And then we have the, the three layers or the three letters for mom. And I have it, here is where you'll do a score line. With all my files, I give you some instructions that hopefully might be helpful, especially for those who are new to a laser. Um, it might be beneficial for those who are seasoned um, laser users. You probably um, can look at the file and, and figure it out. But I want to make sure to help those who are new to a laser to know um, when they get their file exactly what they need to do. So this is a scored line. And I actually have this word mom just a little bit smaller than my letters. So you um, don't have any of those outs those inside score lines peeking out from your letters when you glue them on. So a quick and easy file. Um, this was really fun to design. So, and then once you glue them all together, you'll glue your roof on. So the roof is two different pieces and one is a little bit longer than the other. And so the short piece 
will lay on here and it will be butted right up against the very tip top of the house. And then the longer piece will lay over the top of the first one that you laid on. Okay. So if that helps. So to see that. So that's how it's going to be glued on to your piece. Okay, so that's the first one. So the second one, um, it also will have the three pieces. I have just one right here. So I do have this heart and I didn't engrave the heart because I want you to be able to have the option to use the heart or not. Um, um, the word heart is engraved and this is the score mark. And so you can use the heart or not. And I use this small heart with my little greenery. Remember my little greenery, that's what I did on this one. But also, um, there's the hearts that get cut out of the center of this, and they're actually just a little bit bigger. So feel free to mix and match and use that heart on there too. That would be lovely just to paint that um, on there. You could even do a layering if you wanted to do a little bit of a layering with that. That's cute too. So today we're going to go ahead and we're going to paint this just so you have an idea of how to paint. Oh, let me just show you one more thing I was thinking about. So um, because this is quarter inch plywood, three layers, some people might think, well, I don't have quarter inch. Well, feel, feel free to use your eighth inch. And this is what I did. Um, I used some MDF eighth inch and I did put three layers together. Now it's not as thick as you can see. I hold these up. The thickness is not the same. However, this will still stand, This. Um, quarter inch wood will still stand up on its own. It's not as sturdy, obviously, but it still will stand up on its own on a shelf sitter. So it's a little bit wobbly. Maybe you'll, if you only have quarter inch to work with, maybe you'll want to do four layers of this to thicken it up um, if you want it to be a shelf sitter. So that's an option too. Okay, so this is what we're going to paint. So there is one more piece that comes in your kit and this is what it is. So those of you who have already purchased the file have seen this heart um, and I don't actually have this in the pictures. I will add it to um, the Etsy page, um, this finished product project once I get it done. So this is a large heart with a hole in it. So you can make a beaded garland and it is lovely. Again, a quick and simple, easy, um, way to do this and then I am going to um, put a a tassel on the end of here so I'm going to work on that today and then I'll add some add some extra pictures to my Etsy shop so these would be so cute together um, on a shelf for mom so when I make my tassel and I'm going to make it a little bit later so this is my extra bonus for this file for this um, mom's day house. So, and then I have a tassel maker and this is what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna do a video in just a little bit showing you, I have done one in the past on how to do tassels, but I'm gonna show you again to make a tassel for our beaded garland. Now I did, today I actually added this to my Etsy shop as an SVG. So you are able to, um, Go ahead and purchase that and it's really it's very inexpensive so you can get one of these so you will have it on hand so to make your tassels and i will do another video a little later showing you how to use it it's really a handy tool to have instead of wrapping twine around your hand as some people might do when they're making their tassels but this is a really handy handy tool so i will show you that in another video so that is your is a bonus this heart is a bonus to the file. In case those of you who have purchased the file are wondering, what do I do with that great big heart? Turn it into a beautiful tassel. Okay, let's get to making this. You put my little reader glasses on. I have a ton of pair of these. These are so handy, my Dollar Tree reader glasses. Of course, now if I was to purchase them, they would be $1.25, right? not a dollar. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to glue my pieces together. I'm just using my stick fast and just do a quick 
glue together of these pieces. So it's best to have a very nice flat surface to work with when you're making these shelf sitters because you wanna get them as square as possible. I hope you can still see this, but I'm not too far off my camera, but I wanna get make sure I'm here. So I just put my hands around it, my hands at the top, and just make sure that everything is square. That's what I'm trying to feel for, just everything is square and fits together nicely. And once I do that, then I might turn it over and then just push it for a few seconds just to make sure that that glue is going to adhere. Okay, let's put our next layer on. I hope everyone is having a wonderful Thursday today. We have the sun shining here in Idaho and the weather is beautiful. I was sitting outside a little earlier, it was nice. Okay, so bring it down again, put my hands, making sure that this is nice and flush. Okay, so this is how I make my chunky shelf sitters. That's kind of tricky to say too. I don't wanna say it too fast. I'll probably <laughs> say the wrong word. <laughs> so I have several different chunky shelf, chunky shelf sitters in my Etsy shop. I have the Darling Bunnies, Easter Bunnies. I have some Easter Chicks in there. I have some carrots in there that are great for um, um, Easter, Easter projects. So I just love to make the chunky shelf sitters. So those of you who don't have a, um, a scroll saw or something to cut out something thicker, this is an option so that you can have um, shelf sitters instead of using either an easel or the back kickstand which you could do as well if you have a kickstand um if you're not familiar with that i will probably show one in another video along the way but um but this is just a fun way to do it so then it will just stand up on its own which is fantastic okay so the roof will go on last um so these are the pieces that i'm going to use for this one so I'm gonna go ahead and just keep all of that dark on this. Let's see, do I have a sanding block? I don't see a sanding block. We're not gonna worry about it. Sometimes I sand my pieces just to get rid of some of that residue, but I think I won't worry about it. Okay, so for this one, we're gonna go ahead, I'm just gonna use some, this is apple barrel antique parchment. A lot of times I just use the wood that I have on hand. And if you can see, I've already done my mom here and just a dark brown. So we'll set those letters aside. Whoop. So like I said, the painting of these projects, they come together really quick. So if you are looking for um, a quick project to do if you have a craft fair coming up um, and you want to do mom's day um, gifts this is a great one because it comes together super quick okay so i am just going to take my sponge dip it in the paint and then i'm going to tap some off and then how i like to do this this is just a, a plywood and it has a lot of the grain on there which i like and i I still want to leave some of that grain. I'm trying not to do a full coverage of paint, which you absolutely could do. So I am just going to swipe it and then go gently over the heart of the home because you want to be really careful not to get it. So I'm not pushing my sponge into there. I'm just kind of dragging it across with my paint. So just drag in the same bit of paint that I have on here. And then if there's just some thick areas, just rub them out. So I'm just making this kind of look um, a little more on the farmhousey look. So um, you, like I said, you could do a solid painting if you want, or you can just do um, what I'm doing is just a little bit of this. this this techniques works really well on 
um, wood, probably a little bit better than like an MDF. For me, it does anyway. But I know some people have painted um, MDF to make it look like wood, and that's really fun too. Okay, so when I have it a little thicker in areas, I'm just going to rub it back and forth. And with this, you can go as heavy or as light as you want. I really like to use these makeup sponges for um, just some of my painting. I also use brushes too, and we'll be using a brush in just a minute. If you hop on, say hi. Let me know you're here. Let me tell me what you're doing today. And if you happen to catch this on the replay, just type in hashtag replay and say hi to me. Okay, it's looking good. It's looking really good. I like that there's still a lot of, um, of the wood showing through. And so I do, even though I have some of the wood showing through, I do like to seal, I seal all my my items with a spray, acrylic, uh, well, I'm not sure what it is. It's a clear, a clear, clear coat spray. It's what I use for my finishing, my when I finish all my items. So then everything gets really sealed really well. And I feel a sneeze coming on. I'm kind of fighting a cold. The weather has changed to nice weather. And so that's what happens. I don't know. The weather turns nice and then you get a cold. Does that ever happen to you? It's kind of crazy, huh, that, how that happens. So we'll see. Okay, I'm liking it. I like it a lot. Okay, so I'm going to look at my edges. And then I like to clean up my edges a couple different ways. Um, I can use, I'll use like a baby wipe at times just to clean up a little bit of those edges if it's still, if it's still a little bit damp, it will wipe off pretty easily. But if it's already dried, um, I often will use a Sharpie marker. See, I've got some right there. And I like to have nice edges, especially if you're giving this as a gift or if you are selling this, you want you want it to look nice. You want it to have that nice finished look. I'm not going to worry about up here because my roof is going to sit on there. Okay, so that is finished for now. I will do a little bit of shading on the inside, the outside of that heart, and I'll show you that in just a minute. Let's... Let that set aside, and I'm just going to paint these wood pieces. And I'm going to pick. I'm going to do both sides. I'm just using burnt umber, again, just apple barrel. I don't have a preference of really one paint over the other. I use some nice paints from uh, Home Depot, and then I also use apple barrel. I just use um, just a variety. Kind of use use what will you have on hand. If you think, oh, I don't have that color, just maybe mix a couple colors together. Don't feel like you have to go and um, buy the exact paint that I'm using. Use what you have on hand. So just giving it a quick coat. And if you like using paint brushes for this. Um, type stuff, just feel free to use a paintbrush, but I can get a lot of really quick coverage on here with using this sponge. And I'm trying to, I, some of that wood is actually still throw, showing through a little bit, 
and that's okay. I like it too. Oh, excuse me. I had to wipe my nose. I didn't want to blow it here on camera because I think that would be kind of weird. Don't you think that would be kind of weird? I do, so I'm not going to. <laughs> okay. So make sure when you have your roof pieces, make sure you have two, um, two pieces that are not the same size because you want your roof to look um, symmetrical and that's what will give you that. It will give you that look. Okay, so let's set those aside. I'm gonna pull this up a little bit. Let's set those aside. Okay, so this is probably dry now. It's a little cool. I'm gonna actually plug in my heat tool and just dry a little bit more. I can feel if it's kind of cold to the touch, that tells me it's probably still a little bit damp. Maybe it needs to dry a little bit longer. So if I grab a heat tool, that will speed up the process. Okay, now let's go ahead and add, I've got my mom right here um, painted. So, and these I just did with the same, just the, the brown. Um, and I don't ever paint the sides like here. I don't ever paint the sides um, of my edges. I like that dark edge, the dark bird, so I don't. Um, but you, you do it your way if you have another way that you'd like to do it. So I'm just gonna grab, this is, again, Apple Barrel um, Flamenco, Flamenco Red. That's what I'm using, um, just to do my shading on my inside of my heart. And even though this is red, it's actually, because of the shading, it looks a little pink. Okay, I've got my, I've got my brush here, and I like to use an angle brush. Um, I always had flat brushes years ago when I was painting because that's what I taught or that's what I learned how to use. But um, when somebody mentioned um, they use an angle brush, that was like a game changer for me. So I get it wet. I'm going to bring my water down just so you can see exactly what I'm doing. I think that that's really helpful for when you're learning how to do um, this type of stuff. If you're a pro at it, no problem. So I just get my brush good and wet, and then on my paper towel, I tap it on there, and I actually can watch the water seep out of that. So I just hold it there for just a second, just to get a little bit. And then I'm going to add, let me see if you can see this. I'm adding just a little bit of paint on the corner of my brush. And then with my foam tray here, I'm just going to brush it back and forth. And as I'm kind of walking it, it's blending a little bit. It's doing that blending. Okay, so then I am just gonna start and go around that heart. Now I can see this is a lot darker than the other one I did. This is more red and that's okay, I like that too. If you don't like it quite as red, you can wet your brush Take some of that water away and then I'm going to come back and blend it just a little bit more just with the water. So I don't know if you can hear that puppy. We are puppy sitting and so he was outside with my mom for a little while. But now he's inside and he's want, wanting some loving. Oh, 
he is eight weeks old. The cutest pup ever. He's a basset hound. And I'm um, puppy sitting for my neighbor while they went out of town. And my mom is here. She, whoops, he wants to get his word in. Is he here? He wants to get his words in and say hello. So now I'm just taking a little bit of water just to um, lighten that area a little bit. Let me close my door, see if that will help. My mom's in there with him. So he's not all by himself. I didn't leave him all by himself. Okay, so um, so that's how this one looks. And this is a little bit darker than the one I did here, but I like, I like the little darker look. But either way, it's just how much you dip in your, your brush into the paint, like that corner, if you do just a teeny bit, that's probably you'll get that look. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and put my water aside and that's all I need to do for my painting. So now let's go ahead and put some glue on the back of our letters. This is coming together really fast. So you can see if you are doing this for a, um, for a craft fair or something or um, for multiple orders, it comes together really quick. And I'm just gonna turn that over, tap it on my paper towel and then I'm gonna line it up. Now when I have these edges, I pick it up so I can see all the way around because sometimes if it's just at an angle, I might not see the top and I might have some of those scored edges poking out. So just lay it where I think it should go. And that's what's nice about having these scored edges just a little bit smaller. And that's looking really good. And then those scored edges also help you so you can line it up. And so it, it looks like a perfect line under here. It matches so nicely. Okay, give a nice firm pressure here. Move my paint out of the way. Okay, let's come to my roof. Now I wanna take my shorter end, remember? So my shorter end, and it doesn't matter whether you put it on the left or the right, but I like to start with my shorter end first. So this is where it's gonna go, right here, okay? So I'm gonna get my glue. And this is why I didn't worry about cleaning up the edges on the top of the roof right here. Because it's not gonna show, okay? So I'm just walking it up. Now I want to feel it right up against this edge. And remember, you have just a few seconds to work with the stick bass glue. And then I come here and try to line it up so it looks centered this direction. Okay, firm pressure. Okay, now the other side. Isn't this cute? Okay, so put a little bit of glue on the other roof up there because that's the second part is gonna cover it. Okay. So now I'm gonna match. I see I got some extra glue, glue on the top and I don't want that glue to seep out, so. Okay, now I'm gonna put my fingers up here and make sure it feels even to me. And then I'm gonna look down here. Okay, and then I'm gonna give firm pressure. Glue seeps out, I will just wipe it off. Firm pressure. And I forgot to do um, the back because on my pieces, I like to finish the back because it just gives it that finished look. And again, all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a baby white and some of this dark brown this burnt umber. And I'm just gonna 
dab it on with the, the baby wipe. So I just put it in random spots and then I just rub. And I'm okay with it being a little bit darker in some areas. And I should have done this um, before I glued that roof on. Because now I'm going to have to work a little bit harder to get up in these upper corner edges. Not too much harder, actually. There. There. And that's that's all I do for the back. And I, I just think it looks... Um, helps it to look give it that finished look opposed to just looking at the raw wood um really the back's not going to be seen so you know do it your way but that's kind of what i like to do i have some baby wipe on there too okay so the last thing i'm going to do is i am going to um, put a little bit of twine on it so i got this twine and i'm going to wrap it around five times so i leave a, a long edge so that I'll have room to tie on here. And the back's still usually wet. Usually I let it dry, but it's no worry. Nothing to worry about. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, let's bring it over to this edge here. I'm going to actually pull it down just a little bit so it's not really snug against the letters. I want it to have a little bit of, just a little bit of space between the letters. Okay. Let's just tie a knot here. Nice and tight. Okay, so the other thing I would like to do is add just a few beads like I have on this one here. And I have these small little beads I usually just just grab my beads on Amazon and I am going to use, I have, you can use a piece of wire. I have this, um, it's actually for, it's a bead called a uh, easy beater. I just, I did get it on Amazon. So you put the bead on and then you put the twine in and then you pull. So easy. And then just decide where you want your beads to hang from, at what point. And I usually, when I do my knot, I don't do it super tight. Otherwise, I'm afraid the bead could come off. So I just do it, just a loose knot. And I think I want that to come down just a little bit more. That seemed a little high. Let's see if I can loosen my knot a little bit. And since I didn't do it really tight, it's gonna loosen for me. Slide it down a little bit more. There, that looks good. Take my scissors, just trim off that little end right there. And now let's put our, oh, bead first, right? Bead first. And then the twine through the wire, pull the bead there. There. And if you find your bead is going to fall off that knot, do two knots if you need to. Okay. So this project is complete. Super cute, isn't it? And it's super easy. 
it's a quick and easy project that you can make for the season of Mother's Day. So anyway, all done. So I will come back um, today or tomorrow and show you um, how I painted this heart. It again is just a super easy paint. And then we have this one to show you how I painted this one too. Super easy. Anyway, thanks for so much for joining me today at Center Street Decor, SVGs and more, where I design SVGs for glow forges and other laser printers for all the seasons. So if you have any questions, just let me know and I will be happy to answer them. If you purchase my files and have questions, um, send me a message and you, if you are unsure about some things, I am happy to help. So anyway, I hope you all have a great day and we'll talk to you later. Bye.